I'm going to start off uh, the Q&A with a question of my own. Um, Reese, the one thing I actually really love about your film is how ambitious it is. I hadn't seen a local film quite like how big in scope, and, and I applaud that. It's, it's uh, something that blew me away. So I'm curious about your writing process. So when you go out to make a, a film like this in the confines of Canadian independent cinema, tell me, like, how, you know, you want to make something that's going to blow everybody away, but you're restricted. But I, what I like is that you didn't restrict yourself from doing what you wanted to do. So please tell me about like your writing process and basically how you went about making this film. Well, I mean, I think you kind of answered it. There was just no restrictive process to the writing. Um, we had become, it, yeah, at all. It, we had become increasingly frustrated with the fact that we couldn't get another project off the ground. Um, and we thought, oh, hey, let's just go do something small in the meantime. It didn't really small. work out that way. Um, but a lot of it boiled down to the fact that um, I think there are these preset notions with independent film where you go into it and you know, write for only what you have, only the people you know, only the locations you can get. And that just did not sound interesting at all. Um, I liked the idea of, well, I like sci-fi movies. I want to try and see what we can do. And there was never a question of, uh, can we pull it off? It was just, no, how are we going to do it? That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Amazing. And then, I mean, you surround yourself with some phenomenal, amazing exactly. people and, you know, the crew here exactly. too. Amazing. I'm going to open up to the floor. Questions? I noticed in the credits that you, you did some filming in Godrich. What exactly did you do there? <laughs> we got we got one shot in Godrich. Yeah. Two shots in Godrich. Um, we just had somebody, uh, a suit jumping off of a platform, and we did some miniature shots of those doors closing, opening and closing. Okay. In Godrich, because it was accessible and it's what we needed, and there was a studio there. So I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint. He's from around that area, though. So. Uh, I lived there for a couple of years Woo! with my ex, so as soon as I saw Goddard, I was like, Really? <laughs> Goddard just changed them. It's Goddard in the future, so. Yeah. <laughs> anybody else? Kind of bright. I can't see anybody at the back. Oh, no, there was a hand right there. If you have a question, I can't really see you, so um, please go ahead. The red shirt. The, 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 the um, implantation scene. Um, was very reminiscent of Invaders from Mars to me, both, both versions. Uh, was that intentional or just coincidence? Would you hate me if I said I've never seen Invaders from Mars? <laughs> watch it, watch both of them, but not necessarily, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was not intentional, but now I'm gonna go check it out and feel no, they're bad, both, so they're thank, you for that. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Thank you very much. Make sure you add that to your next book. Oh, Who got to build the drone? Who Wait. got to build the drone? How much? Oh, how much? How much? Can we let them tell the numbers? We can tell them the cost of the drone. Exaggerate. Is this on? The guy who built the drone actually just, unfortunately, he just ran out. Um, uh, Brad, uh, this is Rothwell, right? Brad Rothwell. Right, Brad Rothwell is a, an effects and uh, design guy here in the city, and he um, he used like a, a lot of foam and fiberglass to build it kind of like a car. I think it was like, was it, I think we built it for three grand, yeah. Uh, but it, it, it didn't fly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, which was disappointing. Whatever the lasers work? Pardon me? The lasers work? Yeah, the, totally the lasers work, yeah. Anybody else? When is part two coming? There you go. Sequel. Yeah. Sequel question. Yeah. I don't know if we could put ourselves through that again. I mean, if we had a couple extra dollars. You, you got a checkbook like, with you? Yeah, you got a checkbook. I mean, I'll happily really write a sequel, but um, there are no immediate plans right now. But thank you for asking. <laughs> right at the back there. Uh, well, the first the role of Rhett, that was written for Colin. Uh, Colin and I have known each other for years now. Um, and I mean, Colin's an actor, and I said, what kind of role would you like? I'm telling the story for him. I'll let him fill it in. Anyways, I wrote the role for him. Uh, I also wrote the role of Jean for Raven as well, because I had seen her in a bunch of shorts. Uh, and I thought, 
she'd be great in this. And then everybody else, it was just a casting session here in Toronto over a few days, over a couple weekends. If you guys want to take away and add to that. It was great. <laughs> a lot of people turn out. It was wonderful. No. Um, yes, uh, that, that is exactly, I, I don't have much to add to that. <laughs> I did help with the casting. Yes, uh, I, I actually sat in on, on all of the casting. And uh, so I got to see, I got to see it from its genesis right through until the very end. So that was an interesting process for me. But um, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, sorry, I, yeah, right. I'm, I'm so eloquent. I can only speak when I have a script. I think what was. Um, what was interesting is, uh, you know, we had, like, in the case of Jamie, who played ja Jamie, are you still here? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Why aren't you Jamie? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll wait, if you want to come, I'll tell a story as you're coming down. You should come down here, I'm just saying. Yeah. Anyways, because of the way, because of the nature of how we shot the film, which was done in chunks, uh, we lost a lot of people along the way, and there was actually somebody else cast in that role that we had started shooting with. And then during our break, for their own reasons, they decided to lead the production about, I'd say, three days before we started shooting again. Um, so we were in a rush, and we had worked with Jamie in a scene that's deleted from the film. And uh, we said we had a lot of fun working with her. There she is. Her throat is still intact. And anyway, we, we rewrote the role on the fly for Jamie. So pretty much all those scenes with Jamie, her dialogue was coming in that morning and she was having to learn it that day because we had to completely overhaul the role because the role originally was written as a male and then we switched it to female and did some alterations as we were going. So it was just one of the many things. No, she also had to do some stunt coordination as well as learning her lines. Yes, yes, of course, of course. All of them. And all of them did their own stunts, so. Except me, because I'm a diva. <laughs> I have a question for all the actors. What was your favorite scene to shoot? Oh, God. No, not me. Come on, Dennis. Come on, come on, Dennis. I know the favorite scene. I'll answer for them. The, Funny. the John McClane death scene. <laughs> The final scene was so challenging to skip between two characters within sentences, so that was definitely the most exhilarating challenge for me. Which was awesome, by the way. Um, I, I, I gotta be honest with you, I, like, Rhett does not say a whole lot throughout this movie. Hi! And uh, so, the, yeah, for me it was the end scene, and it was it was interesting because you know I have I have a younger sister who is roughly about the same age difference between Raven and myself, and I won't say what that is because I don't want to date myself. <laughs> but um, it was it, it was really interesting. Yeah, it was it was just a, a, a wild scene to sort of to, to, to delve into because. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with that. All I know is, is that that was my favorite scene. Jamie? Uh, it's uh, when I died. <laughs> it was incredibly gruesome, and my heart was pounding. So it's really cool to kind of um, be set up by this fabulous, talented man, Mitchell. Uh, his work is pretty stunning. Can I say that about a fly? Yeah. Uh, it's just really cool to be a part of his process as well as him, his, him, mine. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of just neat to see that all come together uh, on screen. I have a question cool. for you. How did it feel uh, getting the reaction that you did when you died? <laughs> Cool. <laughs> that was also Jamie's first day on set. 
said, hi, welcome to set. We're going to slit your throat. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry, Jamie. Okay, then. But it was really cool. It worked, yeah. Oh, I see my father. Yes. <laughs> this is the dad, the, the original creator. <laughs> uh, I wanted to ask the actors and crew, because I've been with Reese. I know how difficult it is for him to create his vision and then for you as actors and crew to try and capture what he's doing. So I'm just curious what your reaction was upon seeing the film for the first time and seeing it all put together in pieces because as you say, a recent, you know, was a shot out of uh, sequence. I'm just curious what your reaction was on first viewing. Uh, well, shall we move down the line? Is that all right? Okay, go ahead, Ray. Um, well, um, Reese's writing is so tight and the beats are so perfectly formulated that seeing it on the screen was actually very smooth compared to reading it. Um, the concepts were very vast and always surprising, but um, <coughs> it was sewn together very beautifully, and so I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, and I'm sure I can speak on behalf of several actors here, got others, um, uh, especially independent films. Um, a lot of times the, the, the dialogue and the shooting that you have to work with, um, it's unique. We'll go with unique. Um, it's, it's a treat. So when, when I originally got to read the script, like Graham said, it was very tight. And it, was, it, was, it was well written and delivered and the characters all had a lot of volume. Um, which was really nice. Um, when we, when I, I feel like every actor had like, like well, except Colin <laughs> had like a monologue that they had to go through, and Reese is like, he comes up, to, he comes up to me, and he's like, look, I know you're not very smart, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this in little sections so you don't have to memorize much. <laughs> okay. No, I think it was like a, like an on the day decision, and I was like. Fucking A. <laughs> I, I said all of that with a lot of love. A That's lot of love. total bullshit. And, um, <laughs> but when, when a director is <laughs> reading your face as you're looking at like four pages of dialogue and he kind of jumps to play hero right there and still make it all work and then show it on screen the way that he did with the editing and everything else he does, um, it was really pleasant to see somebody um, who wasn't bringing as much to the table as he had hoped as far as like uh, memorizing and, and then he kind of took over and then edited everything together and then made it look flawless and then entertained everybody. So it was a really, really nice experience from an actor's standpoint and I'm sure I can speak on behalf of several people here. Say to him, I think Isaac developed a small hate for Reese throughout the shoot. <laughs> Um, they buried that hatchet, but which I'm glad because it, <laughs> they've fallen in love again. But um, uh, yeah, no, it was an amazing experience uh, for me, and I'm assuming it was an amazing experience for all the other team as well. You were amazing, bro. <laughs> I think someone in the back corner had a question. That's what I was told. There was a guy over there. because, I mean, um, looking back, it feels like it was so long ago. Um, and it's interesting being, I mean, I'm, I'm 22, so um, I feel like this time, at, I evolved so quickly and based on my experiences. So it's interesting to make decisions on a character when you yourself have evolved. Um, there are core parts of the relationship that you know uh, innately, uh, like love for your brother, will succeed, and so those are the things you hold on to. 
a little bit too. <laughs> um, for me, it was interesting because, like, when we shot the big, like, the very, okay. <laughs> That's my bedtime, man. Um, we shot the movie in in the first little block that we shot in. We almost shot it in order. So it was a little bit easier in that respect because I already knew where my character was going to be beginning. Um, when we got into sort of the, the middle of the film towards the end, that's when things sort of got out of sequence and, and, and that, was, that was a bit of a challenge because you, I mean, you, you have to think, okay, in this scene, where was I beforehand and where am I going afterwards? And that, that, that can be a bit of a challenge, but um, for, we got lucky in the very beginning of it because we, we did have that sort of continuity, right? Foundation. That's right, we had a foundation. Foundation. <laughs> we got time for one more question. What was the biggest challenge from a cinematographer's point of view? It's just saying words in the photography. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, biggest challenge was not, not having enough gear. Never having enough gear. Um, I mean, much like the actors, there's also uh, a consistency issue because, of course, we jumped around a lot and we were all wearing a ton of hats. So if I wasn't rebuilding the suit or painting it or selling it or putting it on somebody, I was trying to figure out how the heck to keep the movie consistent. So it was, I think that's the biggest challenge with, with everybody here is that we were, we were, as you saw, the scope was enormous. So we were bouncing all over the map, interior, exterior, eight studio, studio, uh, warehouse studio sets, uh, I don't know how many locations. So to try to get something that all looked, you know, part of the same the same palette was was interesting. Also, you threw keys at me because he, he's he's yeah he's like you know he's a he's a particular dude. He's kind of like his dad. <laughs> Wasn't just keys, Isaac. There were there were a lot of things, a lot of things were thrown at you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know we're wrapping up here, right? I just wanted to say, once again, a huge thank you to the crew um, and the cast, obviously, because a film like this, on the limited budget that we had, could not happen without the support of that many people. So just a quick round of applause for the police. In terms of where you can learn more about the film, I mean, you can always go to our uh, Facebook page, facebook.com slash Defective Future. Please check it out, uh, and we'll keep people updated on releases and stuff like that. Uh, and just one more quick thing, the unsung hero here is Peter Zabo, the producer. Um, because he invested a lot of his own money into the project. He stood by my side for years when we were trying to get this off the ground, and he supported all of our crazy decisions, and you can't make a movie like that on that small of a budget without making some drastic crazy decisions. So thank you, Peter for putting up with us. And we also have a ton of hand-painted posters to hand out, so please come down and get them. Thank you very much, everybody.